I'd like to thank everyone for joining this webinar, and I'm hopeful that you will all learn a little bit more about factoring, uh, particularly how factoring can benefit a business broker. As you're talking with clients out there who uh, might have needs that can't be met by the banks, uh, recommend factoring. We might be able to give them the working capital they need until they do qualify for more traditional financing. From this presentation, with a little bit of idea as to what factoring is, understanding the terminology of factoring, uh, like you understand how factoring works specifically at Versa because we do it a little differently than some others do, and I think you're going to like some of the reasons we're different. Uh, I'm going to tell you what's out there in the factoring world and, and when to choose Versant over some other factoring companies, answer some, some of the questions I'm, I'm thinking you'll have, and then I'm going to give you some examples. I think it's a great way to illustrate when factoring could be uh, valuable to clients. So what is factoring? So in its simplest terms, what factoring is is the sale of a company's accounts receivable in order to obtain working capital. So we are not making loans to companies, we are buying assets from companies, essentially converting an asset, their receivable, into cash. And there's lots of types of factoring out there. Uh, many companies might call it factoring, and really what they are doing is just making business loans. But I'm going to give you a good understanding of our factoring, which is called non-recourse full notification factoring. And what that means is that when we buy a receivable, we take on the risk associated with their customers paying uh, and we're also their customers are notified of the existence of this financing and payments are coming to Versant and I'm going to explain a little bit more about it. But I think a good way to place a start is the terminology. My background is, is lending, is loans. I spent most of my career doing SBA loans so that's the terminology that I'm most familiar with but I like to translate that to the factoring world. So instead of loans here we have a factory facility. Instead of a loan amount, we have factoring volume. There's no lenders here. Again, there's no loans being made, but we have a factor or a purchaser of receivables. Similarly, there's no borrower. We have a client or the seller of receivables. In lieu of a note or loan agreement, we have a purchase and sale agreement, and there's no interest being charged here, uh, but there is a discount rate or a fee being charged on the invoices. And I'm going into more detail about how that works. Uh, and instead of a, we have a borrower obligor, instead we have account debtors or the customer's clients. Typical profile for a factoring client is we're looking for a, a small to medium sized business with revenues anywhere from one to, to up to a hundred million. And what all of our clients have in common is that they need liquidity, they need cash, and they can't afford to wait 30, 60, 90 days to get paid. Now that's a need that's often filled by a bank line of credit. And if your client can qualify for a bank line of credit, I encourage you to direct them there. But our financing is for those that don't have that as a choice, that banking is not available to them right now. And there's a lot of companies that fit that criteria, fit those criteria. Um, they include a startup company. Now, since we're buying receivables, the company needs to be operating, but they can be brand new and just starting to generate sales, or a rapidly growing company, uh, a seasonal business, a company that's experienced losses recently, um, we have clients that even are currently in bankruptcy, but for some reason what it comes down to is they, they don't know what banks are offering right now. And their customers, our clients' customers, are usually big companies because as I alluded to earlier, what we're doing as a factoring company is we're buying a receivable. So we're buying the money that our clients are owed by their customers. So therefore, we want their customers to be strong. So you know, they don't have to be top of the line, it doesn't have to be all Walmart and the government, but it has to be a good company that we expect will pay, be able to pay their bills. And Versant, we will work with just about any industry with a couple of exceptions. And those exceptions are medical or, or doctors and dentists uh, or construction. And there are factory companies out there that specialize in those areas, but that's just not. How can we help? Well, we can provide cash to clients quickly. Um, that's one of the great features of what we offer because we're not underwriting your client business. I'm not going to ask for their tax returns, financial statements. I'm not going to look at their personal credit. I'm going to want to know who are they selling to. But that allows us to go from an introduction to funding within a matter of a few days. Uh, our transaction size um, can go anywhere from a, a $100,000 per month all the way up to $10 million a month or more. And that's one of the ways Versant differentiates ourselves is our ability to do some larger transactions. And we are, again, offering a non-recourse program. That means we're not required to 
requiring a personal guarantee from our owners. We're not auditing their financials. We're really just looking to. In terms of how our clients use the factoring proceeds, we honestly don't really care. It's up to them. Uh, what I've listed here are just some of the ways we've seen our clients use factoring proceeds in the past. Maybe to finance some short-term project. Uh, bridge financing is very common, getting them over a hump that they're experiencing. General working capital needs. I mentioned debtor possession financing, a company that's currently in bankruptcy. And we've seen it used to help a client acquire their business, uh, basically trying to liquid, uh, li liquidate those receivables that are on the books at time of acquisition. Here's sort of the, the mechanics of how factoring works. A, our client makes a sale. They might be selling a product or might be performing a service, but they've completed a sale. And now they present the invoice to us. We verify it by contacting the customer, just confirming that what they've, our client has given us is a valid receivable. And then usually that same day, we're wiring the client 75% of that, of that face to use however they, they see fit. And then this sort of a flow of cash begins because as their customers make payment to us, now we have that remaining 25% that we didn't advance initially that we now can advance to our client taking out our fee. And our fee typically accrues at a rate of 2.5% per month, the invoice is outstanding. And that fee comes out of the payment we receive from their customer. So unlike a loan, our clients aren't making payments to us. There's not some fixed amount there that is due to us on a monthly basis. We are advancing 75% up front. When the customers pay us, we take out 25%. The one I'm trying to show here is again, it's a cycle or a constant flow of cash. We've got some clients, we're buying invoices from them every day. So every day they're getting 75% wire to them for the, the sales they've made. And then every week we send them the, the rebates, those 25% that they are owed less the fees. And we can do that as often as daily. We've got clients that us uh, whose sales are more erratic, so we might be doing it monthly or quarterly. But the point is the clients can use it when they need it, much like they would a line of credit, factoring more invoices when they need more or holding back some when they don't need as much. Give you an idea as to what's out there in the factoring universe. Uh, I've, I've only learned this business over the last few years, and I can tell you there's, there's a lot of differences in what's out there, yet they all might call themselves a factoring company. And there are a lot of factors out there. Most of them have very limited capital, and what they want to factor is a few thousand here, a few thousand there, and that can be very valuable if it's a small business that only needs a few thousand dollars at a time. Then there's another big chunk of, of factors out there, the big boys. Uh, the CITs, the GMAC, uh, Rosenthal, some of these really big companies that they're looking for very large transactions, but also they're looking for very strong companies. Typically, these entities are working with businesses that it just might be a small notch below bankable, and the type of financing they provide it often is very strongly based on the financial condition of their clients. Versa differs in that we are willing to do much larger deals than the Category 1, but without the same requirements of the Category 2. Like I mentioned, I'm not underwriting our clients. I'm just looking at their, their customers. So it's not uncommon um, that, honestly, Category 1 and 2, those are both great referral sources for me and have been, in that the, the client that's too big for Category 1 or it's got too much hair on it for Category 2 as uh, reversing. We also, one of the ways that we are different as well, we are a small company and we're privately funded, but we are well capitalized. So our clients get a very personalized service. They get to very quickly talk to a decision maker. Uh, I'm going to connect them with either the owner of our company or his right-hand man very early in the process if the deal appears viable. So they're going to know very, very quickly if we can help them. Sometimes the answer is no, of course, but they're going to learn that in a matter of hours, not weeks and weeks like it might take with some, some other staff. Now, I'm some of the questions you might have here, uh, but I think we'll have some time for more questions at the end. Basic requirements for factoring. What it comes down to is that we've got a client selling something to good quality customers. Uh, do we offer factoring in all U.S. states? The answer to that is yes. And we've actually dabbled a little bit in some customers uh, selling outside the U.S. as well. So we can deviate from that a little bit. Do we require certified financials? And no, we don't. I'm not talking about financial statements on our clients. Does the company have to be profitable to qualify for factoring? And the answer is no. And you know, that's something that might kill a deal with just about any traditional lender. They want to see profits, they want to see cash flow, they want to see typically an increasing trend. We don't need to see any of those things, and that's the type of client that I can help. 
How long does the process take? Very commonly, we can go a week from introduction to funding. Uh, as probably a lot of people on this call can understand, if there's a delay, it's mo most often because the client didn't tell us something or told us something that turned out to be incorrect. But if we're given the correct story at the beginning, um, it's not at all uncommon for us to do this in a matter of a few days. What industries will person purchase accounts receivable from? Almost all of them. A couple of exceptions, medical and construction. And if there's anybody on this call that has a contractor or medical professional in need of help, I could help point you to some specialists in that industry, but it's just not where, where we play. Is there a minimum volume of receivables? And yes, for Versant, we're looking for companies that can factor at least 100,000 per month. Uh, we've, we've gone a little lower if we think the client will grow, uh, and we've done much, much larger. We've gotten as large as 10 million per month. But we're not looking for the real tiny deals. And again, I've got people I could refer you to if that's what your client happens to need. Does Versant require personal guarantees? The answer to that is no. And that's been a strong differentiator for Versant in that we, we do not require a personal guarantee. What we do require is called the performance guarantee. And that's really just somebody at the company standing behind the invoice that they sell us. You know, what, what we're doing, we're buying an invoice. You know, since we're buying a piece of paper, and that can be an easy thing to, to make up, and fraud is a, a real risk in our industry. So we need somebody at the company to say, if they give us an invoice for $10,000 worth of their product or service, that that is what they truly have delivered. And if it turns out the product is, is defective or they didn't do the service, we're going to be able to invalidate that invoice. But no personal guarantees in, in terms of they're not guaranteeing the quality of their customers. Who qualifies for factoring? Uh, factoring really can work for a wide range of, of companies in a lot of industries. What they all have in common is that they're selling something to good quality companies. They've got pretty good profit margins, so they can afford the cost of, of factoring, and they don't qualify for what banks have to offer. So sometimes it's because they're new, sometimes it's because they're growing rapidly, uh, or sometimes they're just in out of favor industry. And I can tell you a couple of years ago, we were getting a lot of inquiries for businesses that touched the automobile industry because nobody wanted to go anywhere near it at the time. That's changed, but the point is an out of favor industry can also be a good fit for, for factoring. Can a company with little or no credit history qualify for factoring? And the answer is yes. We have had clients where we factored the first invoice they ever issued, but they were issuing the invoice to a good quality company, so that made it a good fit. Do a company's customers always know when a company is seeking financing through factoring? And the answer to this is also yes. And I can tell you, this is probably the most common objection I receive about factoring from our clients. They worry, well, what are my customers going to think? Well, and it's good. They should worry what, what your customers think about what's, what's happening to your business. But it's just not the red flag that many of our clients expect it to be, particularly in today's very tight credit environment. What our clients are going to tell their customers is they've got financing, and their financing is factoring, and payments are going to go to Versant for the term of the program. But there are so many companies that don't qualify for factoring. And also, the bigger our clients' customers are, the more likely it is that they are already paying factors. Um, companies like Walmart and Target and Kohl's, are, so often our clients are so worried, what are they going to think about me? Those customers are paying factors like crazy already. They're flipping a switch in a payable system, and the checks are going to a new address. So it's so routine for them. It's just not the red flag. But because our program is non-recourse, because all we have going for us is that those invoices are owned by Versa and the payments are coming to us, it is important that our clients' customers know that the financing is in place. And I've sort of answered the next question here through my last response and that it's not the red flag that our clients expect it to be, but I expect every client is going to worry about it and we're going to tell, talk to them about it. What I've done here is I've tried to illustrate one of the, the real benefits of factoring. And the idea is people, of course, perceive factoring as, as expensive. And if you compare it to bank financing, it sure is. But our clients don't have bank financing as an option. What our clients have as options are taking on a partner and now giving away a share of your profits indefinitely or foregoing doing new business. Those are usually the choices our clients have. So this example assumes that by factoring, our clients can do more business than they're doing now. And as a result, uh, in this example, it's somewhat dramatic, but we've, we've demonstrated they can double their business. And assuming costs of goods sold remain the same, um, profits go up, 
by double because their business gross profits go up by double because their business has doubled. But if you look, the net profits have gone up by by four times uh, as a result of the fact that they have been able to do much more business than ever before while maintaining their profit margin, keeping their their fixed cost the same, their variable cost the same percentage of sales. They can dramatically increase the net profit, the bottom line, by increasing revenue, and that's what we tell our clients all the time. If factoring will allow you to do more business than you're doing now and your profits are good, then this makes sense for you. If factoring is not going to help you grow your business, well then it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to do it. Or if you have an option of much cheaper financing, you should take that. But if you can get, can't get the financing you need from a bank and you have the opportunity to do more business, that's when factoring. I think examples are a great way to get people to think about when this could be a fit for one of their clients. So I've got a few here I want to run through quickly. This first one was a manufacturer of consumer electronics, had been in business for a long time, and they sell sort of a lower end model of uh, tablets and e-readers and MP3 players, and they've got great customers, Walmart, Target, etc., some of the real big boys. Their problem was they had a shipment go out of thousands of units that turned out to be defective. So they had a tremendous number of returns. They had some covenants with their bank that were defaulted upon as a result of those returns. So their bank cut them off, and this company was desperate for working capital. Um, it's a large company, so they didn't have a lot of choices in terms of, of financing sources. They're just not bankable right now. We're stepping in. We're going to provide them the working capital they need. And I expect a business like this will outgrow us probably in 12, 18 months and be able to move on to bank financing, but will help them bridge that gap. And that's what we're The next example I think is another good one in that this was another well-established business that had done well for many, many years. Our client had just purchased the business. They, they purchased it just uh, about a year ago in a very tight credit environment. So financing from a bank was not available. So the seller held a note. I'm sure everyone's called been in a situation like this. Well, now that seller didn't really know how to extricate herself from the business. So she was very much in the, the current owner's business, um, talking to customers, getting involved with suppliers. It was just not a good relationship. So our client wanted to pay her off as soon as possible. So he took a somewhat drastic step of doing a sale leaseback of his equipment and factoring his receivables to give her the cash so that she could get out of their, their business. And he's been doing quite well since then. And again, this is another scenario where as this business gets more stabilized under the new ownership, they'll be paying us off probably now. Lastly, another example and what made this a good fit for factoring is software companies are notoriously difficult to finance. One is there's very little in the way of tangible collateral. I mean, you've got a lot of intellectual property, but not a lot of hard assets. And this company, their stumble was they were working so hard, pretty much all of 2011, for a merger to go through. That merger was going to be with a complementary offering, and they thought it was going to bring them to the next level. Well, they were so focused on that merger that the, the, the business suffered. Financials took a hit. Their existing customer base felt neglected. They lost many of them. They brought, a new, new, they brought on no new customers. And then the merger <laughs> fell through. So after a year of all that effort, they were looking at a business that was in somewhat of sh shambles. The bank was not willing to renew their, their facility. So again, we're stepping, away, stepping in here to bridge them until such time as they can uh, get more affordable bank financing. So some time for any questions anyone might have, um, and I'll, I'll uh, throw it to you, Tom, if there's uh, you or anyone on the call has questions. Sure. Mm-hmm. things. Um, one is a, a very low margin business can be tough. I, I probably get a call once a month for a company that uh, does fuel deliveries and they have lots of great customers, they've got lots of great receivables, but the margin of that business are so thin, it's like 8 to 10 percent, that to give away 3, 4, 5 percent in factoring fees just isn't going to make sense. So that's usually not going to be a fit for, for factoring if the margins of the business are, are not good. Another is you know, I mentioned construction, but any type of business that they're invoicing before work is complete. You know, if they're invoicing 
on a progress basis, that can be difficult to factor as well because there's a good chance that, okay, they've submitted an invoice for the work performed for January, but then something happens in February that the client, their customer, doesn't like. Like, you know what? I'm not paying that January invoice. So any kind of progress payments can also be sort of a red flag and difficult to, to factor. Uh, no, well, I can tell you a question we always ask very early in the process is liens. Uh, if there's any lien on the receivable, it's difficult for us to, to help them. Um, so it's not uncommon that our clients don't even realize that there's some type of lien associated with the SBA loan they got or the line of credit they got. And, and so it's a question we ask early is, are there any liens on the assets of this business? If there is, it doesn't mean the deal is dead, but it means now we need to collaborate we're going to need the cooperation of that existing lender so that we can carve out the receivables to allow us to work with them. So it's a question I always encourage, I always ask early on, and I ask any referral source to also get that out in the open so that we can figure out if there's a challenge there or not. I can tell you there's a number of industries we work with over and over again. Manufacturers are a great fit uh, for a couple reasons. One is manufacturers uh, often have good quality customers, so good quality receivables. Also, their margins tend to be pretty good, so they can afford factoring. And there's a lot of overhead. You know, if you're manufacturing something, you've either got a big mortgage payment or a big rent payment. You've got people you've got to pay salaries to, and yet you've got to wait 30, 60, 90 days to get paid. So that's often a good fit where they've got that gap between them spending the money to produce the product and getting paid for the product. On the sort of on the flip side, we've done a lot of work with staffing companies and what why they're a good fit is again margins are good and the, for them their overhead is people. They have to pay their staff weekly or, or two weeks at the latest, yet their customers are not going to pay them for again 30, 45, 60 days. So there's again that gap. And if that staffing company can't get bank financing, we can help fill that gap for them. So manufacturing, staffing uh, are great fits for, for what we do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have talked about that right at the beginning. Absolutely. There sure is. And actually, it's one of the great things about, about factoring is that we... There's an ongoing referral fee, and the way the fee works is for any client you bring to Versant, you would get 10% of any factoring fees we earn from that client paid to you every month for as long as we work with them. Now, I mentioned many of our clients graduate from us in 18 to 24 months, but there's also many that renew. So it's not uncommon that you bring us a client today, and you're getting checks every month from Versant for years into the future. So it can become a, a real great annuity for you to have a constant stream of income coming from referrals you made in many cases years ago.